We talked about on the No Jumper show saying how he like silences Reddit. You look, he did that too with your own Reddit though. Okay, this is one thing I've learned from Destiny is that there are certain narratives that are too toxic, too implausible, too crazy for you to allow in your Reddit. Like your Reddit just cannot be like 100% free speech because what if your Reddit gets taken over by like flat earth truthers? Yeah. At a certain point, if every single thread is turning into like people talking about how the earth is flat, yeah. it's, it's going to suck, right? So True. from my perspective, it's like, extreme untrue allegations about anybody on the staff is okay. the kind of thing that we definitely intervene in. And that's yeah. one thing that has been annoying as fuck to deal with is like seeing somebody like AD say like, oh, people were posting pictures of my kids and they were being left up in the Reddit. I know myself personally, we could easily go through my history as a Reddit yeah. mod and find like many dozens or hundreds of times that I personally removed shit about AD's kids. Yeah. So it is kind of annoying to hear that because like he knows deep down inside that if he did see something that his kids on the Reddit, that it was probably gone within an hour or two, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that th I there is stuff that's yeah. too foul for you to have in the Reddit. Yeah, it's just that T Rail's threshold for what's too foul seems to include like almost any very commentary or criticism, unless it's straight that, up yeah, propaganda, yeah. Yeah. straight up like I love everything you do. Then yeah. he's not cool with it, which is a crazy move that I've never seen anybody do. I do. I will agree that y'all threshold of what is criticism and what is out of over the line is definitely different. And I didn't see like people's children's during the uh, AD and T Rail era on there, but there would still be things, even if it wasn't like maybe AD's child posted on Reddit, y'all would let them post like their um, girls and things of that nature. No, we would take that and shit even, down for sure. And even too, if yeah. it wasn't, there would be you. Y'all allowed more narratives to be spun about them. And almost none to be spun about y'all. Like, even if they were jokes, jokes would be able to survive on everybody else but you, Josh, and other people like that. But I feel so like if you was, look through our there Reddit, was, there's there a was, ton of legitimate criticism of us. But there is, but there was still selective criticism, too. Like, outside of, we all agree of the whole, don't post my child, don't post my family, and things right. like that. But it was still selective, there was still selective uh, things in terms of like who gets to get joked on or who gets to get dragged this week. Like the, the one who time, never gets to get dragged ever. The one thing I'll admit that I overdid it with in terms of banning people is when the house phone situation initially went down. Yeah. I definitely banned people because at first I thought that the opinion that I like intentionally exposed him. Mm -hmm. I viewed that as like such a fringe opinion that yeah, I was just yeah. like, if you're saying that, I'm just gonna fucking block you because gotcha. it's, that that is to me so crazy. That ended up being like a huge percentage of the people were going with that opinion yeah, at that yeah. time, whether they like <laughs> sincerely <laughs> believed it or whether they just like thought awesome. it was so much <laughs> fun to believe it that they were just gonna roll with it. Yeah, that I regret because it's like you you only want to like for instance during the Lena and Jason Love era, right? I didn't ban one single person for talking about that shit, yeah. Because right. it's just like how could I possibly think that I'm going to control this narrative? Yeah, you know, this is crazy. just the most basic thing that's going to get right, discussed right, here. Right, right. I didn't realize that the house phone thing. I probably should have like used that same mentality towards that of like yes. this is such a hot topic. I'm just going to let people say whatever the fuck they want, no yeah. matter how bad it makes me look. You know? Yeah, 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 man. So. uh I guess that's it. I mean, uh, did, did you? Did they have anything else that they you saw in that clip that they were kind of addressing? You I with? literally only saw like sixty seconds of it. it but gotcha. but the funny thing about it to me is like I, I put a screen recording on my Instagram story. But like when you go through, every comment is a shut the fuck up about no jumper. This is insane. How the fuck mm. are you guys still having the same conversation over and over? Or B, you are insane if you think that we are going to pay for this on Patreon to see it a week in advance, you know? So yeah. like, it's pretty, statements. For, for me, it is a glorious thing to see like a 100% negative comment section, especially <laughs> so just course. because the clip that I saw was like, it was basically T. Rel saying that I'm a bad interviewer, yeah, and that he true. does better interviews, and that my interviews Definitely are true. just intended to like get salacious clips. clips. And shit like that, when yeah. anybody who's ever watched one of my interviews knows that you've got like a two hour block of deep conversation, and then yes, I will get those fucking clips. I will ask you I'm about the crazy shit. Though, yeah. But the difference between me and T. Rel is that T. Rel will sit down with somebody and like hammer a question over and over and over that they're obviously not comfortable with. And I know of multiple people that he's basically like burnt That's his you. bridge with by basically just like exposing what a shameless clout chaser he is and like how he's just has no social graces. I thought that was yeah. nasty what he did with Yeah, that was oh, disgusting. I'm taking that out. Yeah. I'm taking that out. For real? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <what? laughs> Oh, but um, you thought it was nasty. I yeah, I did. It, yeah. But uh, I thought it was nasty. 
Um, I was about to say, but do you like do you like that? What 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 could you uh, what could go wrong podcast? I only seen a couple clips, but I feel like. I like anything that T Rail does in which he's creating more content because the more content that he makes, the more blown out he is and the more it gets exposed to the fan base that he don't really have any talent. Mm -hmm. So like I, I want him doing eight hour streams a day. Yeah. As yeah, is yeah. Mm -hmm. Do eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's speed run <laughs> this process. Yeah. Because by the end of this, there ain't gonna be too many people left. Sure. How long do you think he got? Oh, I think it's already over. But I mean, I feel like his view count is like quickly like getting to the point where he's basically like on par with a bunch of like but, regular ass day in day out about, YouTube streamers in LA. Like he's kind of like reaching this like mediocre level like very quickly. I feel like you're being hard on him because that's what people hard said the because same he was thing. my he was my best know, pupil yeah, at a certain point. Yeah. And to see him f like he leaves and I felt like under my tutelage, he was, best, yeah. he was doing great. Yeah. Was, yeah, there was a huge amount of excitement. Well, he made about Danny Mullen bearable. It, thank you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. like, let's be real, impossible bro. to imagine. Yes, but like, yeah, bro. but like he was like everybody's favorite at a certain point, and to see him now in a situation where that just is clear, like nobody it's, would say that. Yeah, it's like as his op. That's yeah. great. That's that's exactly.